Welcome to the Road to Jesus with Pastor Fred here at St. James Lutheran Church in Marion, Indiana. Today we are covering um, Psalm 26 through Psalm 65. We've just finished a uh, big week of vacation um, Bible school, so um, this is getting out a little late, but um, sorry about that, but we'll try to catch up next week. Anyway, today we're finishing um, book one of the Psalms and going into book two of the Psalms and moving from the Yahwehist Psalms to the Elohim Psalms. And remember, those are both names for God, but the name Yahweh kind of predominates in, in Psalms 1 through 42, and um, then uh, the Yahwehist in Psalms 43 through like 89. So um, two different books, and I want to give a little bit more background on the Psalms. So let's talk about first the major um, imprecatory Psalms, and these include Psalm 69 and 109 and and they also at times include Psalms 5, um, 6, 11, 12, 35, 37, 40, 52, 54, 56, 57, 58, 59, and 79, and 83, and 94, 137, 139, and 143 are also considered imprecatory. Um, now, these are Psalms asking God to take vengeance on your enemies, to make them pay for their unrighteous treatment of you or of God. And these Psalms point to the fact that um, we're not to take vengeance uh, uh, on ourselves, on others, but to let God do it. As an example, Psalm 69, 24 states toward God, pour out your indignation on them and let your burning anger overtake them. This is talking about um, the enemies of the man writing the psalm. Um, and uh, then there are the penitential psalms, which are a group of seven psalms that are used in prayer, usually during times of repentance, such as Lent, or before or after confession. And these includes, include Psalm 6 and some psalms we're covering today, Psalm 32, 38, and 51, and then uh, Psalm 101, Psalm 130, and Psalm 143. And in the next video next week, I'll talk about psalms that are used in actual worship and how they're used. Um, but right now, let's look at Psalm um, 26 through 65. And I'll kind of tell what these psalms are as we go through. For instance, Psalm 26 is an individual lament. Um, this is a plea of someone being falsely accused of doing wrong. It's also a psalm that talks about taking the focus off of ourselves in worship and putting it on God as the object of our worship, which, of course, is always a good thing to do, that it's not about us in worship or what we're getting out of it, but what God is getting out of it. And then Psalm 27 is another individual lament, and this is an expression of David's confidence in God and a request for forgiveness. This psalm tells us that we can put our trust in God and he will be with us. Psalm 28 is also an individual lament. David realizes he can't save himself and asks for help from the Lord. And we can pray this admitting the same thing that we can't help ourselves and having trust that God will help us, which he has promised to do. Psalm 29 is a hymn of praise. Uh, this is praising God for his awesome power and how he can shake the very foundations of the earth. And that that may at first terrify us, but we know as children of God that He is God is on our side and Jesus protects us and keeps us with Him forever. Psalm 30 is an individual psalm of praise. Uh, David shares his feelings about God. He knows that even when he is suffering, it will end with joy. And this gives us confidence in the midst of our suffering that we will experience happiness and joy in the future. The suffering will not continue forever. Psalm 31 is an individual lament. David said he hates those who worship false gods, and instead he trusts in the Lord. This psalm causes us to look to Jesus for forgiveness and uh, forgiveness for worshiping the false god in our lives and assures us that he will forgive us. Psalm 32 is an individual psalm of praise and, and is used in times of confession. This is the second penitential psalm. And this is a psalm that tells us that we are full of sin and that there's nothing we can do about it. We can't make up for it. We can't pay for it on our own. It also tells us that we, what guilt does to us, both physically and mentally, just breaks us down and tears us up. And it leads to Jesus, who is the only one who can forgive our sins, that we are forgiven through our faith in Christ alone. Psalm 33, this teaches us that we need to put our faith in God alone and not in the rulers or armies of this world. The only one who can save us is Jesus. Psalm 4, 20, 34, I'm sorry, is a wisdom psalm. This is a psalm where David tries to convince Abimelech that he's crazy, so that he will send David away and not hurt him. Here David talks about how the Lord saves his people and condemns the wicked, and that it is his will to save all people. 
Psalm 35 is that impeccatory song. David prays that God will save him and rescue him from his enemies and who were once his friends. I mean, those are the worst enemies, right? The ones that were once your friends. This is a psalm uh, to pray when you feel your enemies are trying to cause you harm or you feel like you've been wrongly accused of something. Psalm 36 is an individual lament. The wicked plot against God's people, but he is always their refuge from trouble. Psalm 37 is a wisdom psalm. This psalm draws a contrast between the righteous who are blessed in due season and the punishment from God that will eventually overtake the wicked. We should never feel, feel abandoned because God is always with us and things in the end will be okay, even if they don't seem that way now. Psalm 38 is an individual lament, again used in times of confession. This is the third penitential psalm. It says, The Lord punishes His children to turn them away from sin and to keep them safe in their faith. The wise thing for us today is to continually confess our sins, and God will always forgive us. Psalm 39 is the individual lament. We put our faith in God and rest in the hope that He provides. God will rescue all who call on His name. Instead of pushing God away, we should take comfort in His mercy and grace and promises. Psalm 40 is an individual lament. I, I personally love this psalm. The words are so poetic and beautiful and encouraging. Even when we fall away from God and cry out to Him, He saves us and puts our feet back on a solid rock. He puts His Spirit in our hearts, which leads us to follow Jesus with joy and gladness. Psalm 41 is an individual lament. You know, it asks, why are you cast down, O my soul? Seems to be the primary question in the psalm as we enter book two of the Psalter. It seems in life that the bad guys are always winning, and God seems so far away. This is when we need to trust in God's promises and grace the most that we are not alone. Psalm 43 is an individual lament. The psalmist asks to be saved from his sufferings and asks that he be allowed to return to the sanctuary to worship God. This leads us to trust in God's word. Psalm 44 is a community lament, not an individual lament, but a community lament. The psalmist remembers how the Lord has always been faithful in the past and asks, where is God um, now as we suffer as a nation? And they ask God to help them, the nation of Israel, basically. Psalm 45 is a messianic royal psalm. This is a picture of a royal wedding which shows God as our king and fulfillment of the kingdom in the Son of God. This gives us a picture of Christ and his bride, the church. Psalm 46, the psalm of Zion. This, of course, is the psalm that is the basis for Martin Luther's A Mighty Fortress is Our God. This talks about how God controls nature and that he is our fortress from our enemies and from anything that might harm us. Psalm 47, nations are called to praise God for his actions in Israel, and Israel is caused to, called to praise God for what he has done for them. Psalm 48, another psalm of Zion. God makes his place with his people, and he protects them by his mighty power. Therefore, he is worthy of praise. Psalm 49 is a wisdom psalm. The things of this world cannot buy off death. You need to trust in God and not in material riches. Psalm 50, God judges his people for their empty religious worship of him. He calls them to repent and worship them with their heart. Psalm 51 is the individual lament used in times of confession. Of course, David wrote this psalm when he was confronted by the prophet Nathan for his sin um, with Bathsheba. This is the fourth penitential psalm. When David confesses, he finds God's absolution. Psalm 52 is an individual lament. lament. It's a personal lament for David as he talks directly to his enemies. He's confident in his prayer for deliverance, and David laments the fact that e the evil at times get away with it. Psalm 53, again, is an individual lament. The, the evil surround God's people, but he always saves them. Psalm 54 is an individual lament. David writes this when he's hiding from Saul and is betrayed by the people that he has helped. David trusts that God will come through, which he does. Psalm 55 is an individual lament. David finds himself trapped and deceived by all those he trusted. He has no one but God, so he trusts in him with prayer. Psalm 56 is an individual lament. Um, David writes this when he's been trapped by the Philistines. Even in the midst of danger, David turns to God for help. He trusts that his deliverance is certain. Psalm 57 is an individual lament. Uh, David wrote this after he fled from Saul in the cave. He's almost trapped, and so he prays for God's deliverance and then praises God for that deliverance before it even happens. Psalm 
58 is an individual lament as David challenges the leaders of the people and condemns their dishonesty. Uh, Psalm 59 is an individual lament. David writes this after Saul sends troops to watch David's house so he can capture him and kill him. It is a psalm about prayer in need. Even when we are surrounded, God can deliver us. Psalm 60 is a community lament. God disciplines those he loves and tests people to build their faith, but it is never fun. Psalm 61 is an individual lament. Lead me to the rock that is higher than me. David prays that God would restore him to his throne in Israel or in Jerusalem, which he has temporarily lost. So this is written later on in his kingdom when Absalom takes over. Psalm 62 is an individual lament, a psalm of trust. God alone provides peace. Those who trust in wealth will pay the price in the end. Instead, we are to trust in God. Psalm 63 is an individual lament, a psalm of trust. David's on the run and in the wilderness, and David reacts by praying to God and praising him for his grace and his love. Psalm 64 is an individual lament. Um, God, uh, 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 David's enemies conspired against him, but he turns to the Lord for help and receives deliverance. And Psalm 65 is a hymn of descriptive praise. David praises God for his forgiveness and peace and prosperity in the land, a great psalm of pure praise. Well, that's where we're going to end this week. Uh, next week, we'll do Psalm 66 through Psalm 95. Um, we'll get more into how, again, we use the psalms in worship and, and where they're used because these psalms had a purpose. I would encourage you to continue to read these psalms and read them deeply because they're basically prayers and psalms. They're really, they're really acts of worship. And I think once you get to know them that you will really begin to enjoy them more than, more than you ever thought, they, that, thought that you would. So anyway, um, thank you for joining us for The Road to Jesus with Pastor Fred. And we will see you here next week. Uh, peace out.